Privacy and free speech are fundamental human rights and essential ingredients for a free society. Despite this fact, politicians and government agencies across the world are doing their best to strip us of these rights. Just recently, India became the first democracy to ban encrypted messaging apps, and both the US and UK have bills in the works that would undermine encryption by requiring websites and apps to scan all user content in order to quote-unquote proactively prevent harmful content. In these dystopian times, it's critical now more than ever to regain control over the online services we use, as eventually even traditionally privacy-friendly businesses like Signal will be coerced into complying in order to continue their operations. Fortunately, with help from services like Unihost and StartOS, self-hosting servers on your own physical hardware has become as easy as downloading an app in the App Store. These open source platforms allow you to take charge of your data and services, free from intrusive surveillance and censorship. In this video, we're going to compare and review Unihost and StartOS, both excellent just work self-hosting Linux distros that satisfy slightly different needs depending on your use case and threat model. Starting with Unihost, the contributors define the platform as an operating system aiming for the simplest administration of a server and therefore democratize self-hosting while making sure it stays reliable, secure, ethical, and lightweight. It is a copy-lefted Libre software project maintained exclusively by volunteers. Unihost boasts an extensive catalog of applications that can be easily installed and configured through their web-based GUI. Some of the notable services they provide are Nextcloud, an online storage and file sharing program, Vault Warden, an open source password manager, and Synapse, a decentralized end-to-end -end encrypted messaging service. I recommend checking out the application catalog yourself to see all the other applications they provide. The installation process for Unihost is straightforward, following the standard procedure for installing any operating system. Download the ISO, create a VM, or flash it to a drive to initiate the installation. The Unihost admin page is simple and straightforward. The users page is obviously where you go if you want to set up an account for someone. What's especially cool about Unihost is once you set up an account here, you can allow that user to administer or log into just about any application you want with a single account, rather than having to make a separate user and password for every application. It's worth mentioning that this single login feature isn't available for every application on Unihost, but it is available on a lot. The domains menu is where you can go to add domains that you can use for your various applications. I have mine set up as a local domain, but any domain will work. There's even an option to create a free domain if you don't have one already. The system's update menu is pretty self-explanatory. In the tools section, you can set up things like migrations, firewall settings, general Unihost and web admin settings, and access the power menu. The diagnostics menu is a great place to try and diagnose any issues you may be having with your server. And the backups menu allows you to quickly and easily configure backups, which is very important, especially in a production environment. The Unihost team did an amazing job at including everything you need to administer your server in a simple to use web GUI. You should be able to do everything you need right from here and never have to touch a command line. To install a service, we just head over to the applications menu and click install. All of the available applications are sorted into categories to browse, or you can simply search for an application that you know you want to install. I'm going to start with Nextcloud, which is basically an open source, self-hosted Google Drive or Dropbox equivalent. If you wanted to install Nextcloud from scratch, there are many steps that you need to follow and it can be easy to mess up, especially for inexperienced users. But with Unihost, it's extremely simple. All you really need to do is select who the administrator of Nextcloud will be from the drop-down list of Unihost users, click whether or not Nextcloud should be available to people who aren't logged into Unihost, and then click install. Once it's finished installing, it'll show up in the Applications menu where you can open it up to view or change any settings that you need or launch the application. This will bring us to the Unihost login page where I'll log in with the user that I set up in the Unihost admin panel. We now have access to a fully functioning cloud storage platform hosted on our own hardware away from the prying eyes of Google, Microsoft, and the like. All in all, Unihost is an extremely simple platform to use and has an extensive catalog of easy to install applications. However, if you wanna access your server from outside your network, you'll need to do a little work on your router to get everything functioning properly, such as port forwarding. Opening ports and running services tied to your public IP isn't always the best option, especially for those with heightened threat models. This is where Start OS comes into play. 
Unlike Unihost and other self-hosting-centric operating systems, StartOS sets itself apart by running everything as a Tor hidden service, fortifying your privacy and security even further. Running everything as a Tor hidden service allows you to connect to your applications over the internet without opening up any ports in your network or using a public IP address that can be linked to your physical location. Taking a look at their website, you can see where I got my opening quote. I personally align with their values of decentralization, openness, community, privacy, and independence. And if you're watching this video, odds are you do as well. Similar to Unihost, when you log into StartOS for the first time, you'll be brought to a welcome page that gives you quick access to useful menu items. Navigate to the marketplace to view a list of applications you can install. StartOS comes with two application registries, the official Start9 registry and the community supported registry. The Start9 registry contains packages that are maintained by the creators of StartOS, while the community supported registry contains services that are maintained by the members of the community. You also have the option to add other registries if you can't find the service you want to install in either of their default registries. Seeing as the powers that be across the world are trying their best to get rid of encrypted messaging, we're going to use StartOS to install Synapse, a matrix protocol message server. Matrix is a decentralized end-to-end -end encrypted messaging protocol that will allow us to communicate in a way that would be very difficult for any authority to shut down. On top of that, thanks to end-to-end -to -end encryption, neither the server owner or anyone else for that matter can decrypt a user's messages unless they're in possession of your secret key similar to how crypto wallets implement seed phrases. In order to get Synapse running, just open the app in the Start9 registry marketplace. If you scroll down, you'll see the installation instructions that you'll need to follow. Every app on Start OS has its own installation instructions, so make sure to read this before installing anything to ensure a proper setup. To get started, we just need to click install. Once the installation is complete, you can see the heading says needs config. Select configure to continue. In the config window, we have a few options that we can set. We can choose whether or not we want our server to be able to communicate with other matrix servers with the federation toggle. We can also enable or disable email notifications. And lastly, under advanced, we can choose whether we want external users to be able to register for an account on our matrix server. Once we have everything set up the way we like, we can click save and then start to start Synapse. When the installation is finished, you can click the Launch UI button to head to the Synapse Admin panel. Keep in mind, this will be over Tor, so we need to navigate to this page via the Tor browser. The Launch UI button brings us to a .local address, but if you're using the standard Tor browser, all connections are forced to be proxied through Tor, so we're not able to use the .local domain. This is a simple fix though, just change .local to .onion and you'll be good to go. You can find your username and password for the admin portal in the property section of the Synapse app in StartOS. Again, all of the setup information is written out in the instructions. It's very important to read those before attempting to set up any applications, as some things aren't as obvious as you think they would be. In the Synapse portal, we'll create a new user using the create button at the top. You'll be asked to set up a user ID, display name, and password. Optionally, you can set up the user type and specify if the new user is an administrator. Once your user account is set up, you can use any matrix messaging app to connect to your server. But since StartOS hosts everything as a hidden service, you'll need to use an app that can be routed through Tor. I'm going to use the Element web app through the Tor browser, but Element is also available on mobile and desktop. When logging into your matrix app, you'll need to specify the home server Tor address that your Synapse server is hosted on. You can now start sending end-to-end -end encrypted messages on a decentralized server that's controlled by you and can only be accessed by you. You'll never have to rely on any third party to secure your private messages again. This right here is about as secure and private as internet communications can get. Both Unihost and StartOS are great options if you're looking to get started hosting your own services and keeping your data out of the hands and control of third parties. But how do you determine what works best for you? The answer is pretty simple. If you're looking for a larger catalog of applications and the ability to connect to your different services conveniently over the clearnet, then Unihost is the option for you. And StartOS is better for those who want the utmost privacy and security by running all of your services through the Tor network.